this, this next hour, we're we'll, we'll calling it a plenary discussion, but I think it's more like a guided conversation. Because of, of, the, um, of the institutional aspects, I want to make sure that you know, we, we get all the key information out. So I will be queuing members of the, of, of the extended TAVI team and those from Metro Vancouver so that there will be the opportunity to create some interaction. It's essentially, you can think of this group today being drawn from three sources. There's the flow for three people. There's those of us who represent CAVI and beyond. And then there's this other group which is really diverse. And so it's how we achieve the cross-fertilization to the conversation. So we need to prompt the conversation. So if you all read your program very carefully, you did see this is titled Implementing a New Culture for Watershed Restoration Management. You also heard uh, Jody refer to the new culture, and you heard Anne's comments about, you know, if cultural change takes place, we don't need the plan. So there's three questions that we'd like you to be thinking over as this conversation unfolds in terms of what is happening in the other jurisdictions, that's the purpose of team members to talk about that. Uh, they'll also elaborate on what policies have been adopted to advance new culture. So again, this is part of this interregional uh, cross, cross realization. We also have a general discussion as we can see about how are these broad scale requirements for design of nature or low impact and all being moved forward. So that's kind of the context. And I have asked our team members to keep those three questions in mind. I'd also ask uh, in this session when you do speak, if you could all stand up and boom your voice up and make sure everybody in the room stays awake. So just in terms of, of, of today, and I'm walking your, your uh, space note from location. Uh, it really is significant that we can talk about hands across the Malahat, hands across the Georgia Strait, and getting like that regional team building going. So as much as within the area, it's inter areas. And on the uh, left hand side of the slide, you know, if you've all done your homework and, and read the, the, the series of four stories, well, did you do your homework? Did you read the story? Good. I knew you can count on you. Um, but there's a, a lot of initiatives that have been taking place. And, I think numbers have been talking. We think 2010 will be one of those memorable years in the sense, not just because it's the Olympics, but you know, every so often there's a memorable year like 1989 when communism collapsed. Well, this is the year that we see leading a seamless storyline from all these initiatives that are happening from the Comox Valley, we'll hear more about that, to Ashley for Water in the original district of Nanaimo, uh, the Cowichan Valley, and in terms of taking over, we're talking about Cowichan Basin Water Management Plan, and of course, it's Boker Creek, and then how we inform and educate each other. Metro Vancouver with the Integrated Liquid Waste and Resource Management Plan. Huge step forward, that name change. So that's the context for this guided conversation. But I wanted to ask the group this question. What does Boker Creek and the City of Philadelphia have in common? How many people in this group are familiar with what's happening in, in, uh, in the City of Philadelphia for about the past year? I know you. I know you have Paul. Paul is our one of the guests from from uh, a stream feed, right? Uh, from uh, from Burnaby. Um, I'll give you a hint. Uh, it was the last March time of, 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 a, of a Surrey forum. The day before, that we put out a, a water balance model in New Land about Philadelphia, and you said that it was timely for you because tell us why it was timely. Maybe you can fill the people in as to the significance of Philadelphia, and I'll give the answer. I think the key word is sponge, that's what really caught my eye. Uh, basically, it's from what I recall of the press release, Philadelphia was talking about turning their city into a sponge. So they get all the water back into the ground, so they not, you know, not using pipes anymore. And the reason it really caught my eye is because uh, on our creek, Burn Creek and Burnaby, we're now in the process of doing an ISMP, and as stream deeper group stakeholders in the process. And it's been very slow and a little frustrating. I was just really intrigued by this, that, that a, a sort of huge industrialized city like Philadelphia is moving in this direction. And I was like, like in a place like Burnaby, where we've also had an open water first policy for many decades, and thankfully we still have many streams that are still quite natural. We seem to have difficulty achieving small things. So, yeah, that, that's, you know, I kind of looked at that and I'm like, wow, wow. Yeah, I think the, the significance in terms of you know what you have in common is, is peeling back the actual hard surfaces, the actual green <coughs> giant sponge. And it's been interesting to follow the Philadelphia story of, of the last year because you know when it first came out a year ago, March, there was a little bit of I think a bit of a skepticism, and now 
hearing more and more about it. The reason I wanted to flag it for you is because it's still very much a high level initiative, but it does tell you there's a paradigm shift taking place that's coming. And what I believe will happen is if people, especially if, as we get the word out about the Boker Creek uh, blueprint, will begin to look at what this group has accomplished for on the ground. I mean, it's one of those things where you have to judge your progress by how far you come, not where you're going. I will say that one other thing about uh, well, what's their motivation? Well, their motivation is under the existing rules, and Ron, you probably can hear some of those EPA rules in the states, which can't tend to you know, drive these multi-billion dollar projects. The conventional engineering solution is something like seven and a half, is it, is it seven and a half or five point seven, Jim? Seven and a half. Seven and a half. Billion dollar solution. They can't afford it. What's so, the problem? Oh, yeah, it's just their, um, it's an old city, the combined sewers for 50. So, you know, they're looking at restoring the landscape as the way to reduce volume. So, you know, they've, they've looked at a seven and a half billion dollar solution versus a $1.6 billion solution. Now, Jim, I'm not sure if they can afford the $1.6 billion, but it does show you that a huge shift is taking place. And, but really, it's what you've accomplished with Boker Creek that I think is really the real story and how what's happening here in Boker Creek will begin to inform the Philadelphia of, 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 of the continent. So, something to keep in mind and start following that story. And the, and the differential is what? It's come from seven, six, seven and a half. 1.6 billion. How's that translated? What is that? Yeah. Previous dollars or what is it? What is that? Dollars. 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 Oh, I understand that. Yeah. It's a it's versus Sorry? Heights versus gray gardens and wetlands. That's and exactly. Green roofs. They okay. just they just embrace embrace this the uh, the green revolution because it's their only way out of this uh, jam, right for a jam that they've got. I don't know whether you want to add anything, Chris, in terms of uh, how this ties in with uh, the work you're doing on, on, on Boca Creek. Just kind of your moment, your opportunity. Oh, sure. It's just part of the modeling is a building from the master range plan that was Could done. Could you say that, Chris, as well? Sure. Uh, building on the master range plan that was done a couple of years uh, ago, and I mentioned earlier there's a number of scenarios in there. One of the scenarios is basically replacing all the existing infrastructure at a very significant cost of the big dollar items we saw that houses can't really take. And what I'm looking at uh, as part of my master's here at the University of Victoria with the uh, Water Climate Impact Research Center is uh, using a squid modeling software. Throughout the Boca Creek watershed to say, well, if we're to use low impact development throughout the watershed, how much do we really need to use and what sort of treatments to uh, offset the increase in precipitation caused by climate change? So I'm not looking at managing all the rainwater coming into the watershed. I'm looking at climate change adaptation. You know, if we're expecting an additional 15% uh, more precipitation, <coughs> is low impact development the lowest cost option to that? And uh, it also provides all the other benefits as well. And that, that way we don't have to dig up our existing infrastructure and uh, pay $50 million. And really just have one benefit, that's the flood mitigation. 